Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited because I'm gonna be doing my current favorites and fails. So I have quite a few products that I've been loving. If you didn't see my Sephora recommendations, I will definitely link that down below. That can give you some idea of what I'm loving specifically from Sephora, but a lot of these products are not from Sephora. Things that I'm just loving, I have a self tanner, I have some hair products, I have makeup, and then I'm also gonna talk about some flops. Some products that I just keep trying to make work and they're just not working for me and I'll tell you why, who I think may enjoy them, but for me, they're just gonna be a pass. So I will link everything down below. If you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and let's go ahead and begin. My first favorite is something that I've been personally buying myself for over a year now. I've recommended it to you guys, especially on Instagram, but also here on YouTube. And I'm really excited to say that this video is sponsored by Built Bar. You guys know my love for Built Bar. I have a huge sweet tooth. I struggle with my weight. I'm the girl that wants to eat ice cream, cookies, donuts every single night. These help me stay on track and curb my sweet tooth. They give me the feeling of eating a dessert, but with low calorie and high protein. If you're not familiar with Built Bar, they're the best tasting protein bars on the market. They have 18 flavors, but they do limited drops all the time. Sometimes they drop puffs, which have that marshmallow consistency. The regular bars have more of a Three Musketeers consistency. So they're covered in chocolate and they have all these different flavors like coconut, we have raspberry, we have peanut butter brownie, salted caramel. So they have a ton of different flavors and sometimes they do drops of like white chocolate or they'll do cookie dough chunks. So stay tuned because I will always update you, especially on Instagram of restocks or limited drops. Some of my favorite flavors are are coconut and peanut butter brownie. These are just OGs. I've loved them since they've come out. And then recently I've been getting into raspberry. I'm really typically not into the fruity ones. I'm more so into the dessert ones, but this one is spot on. It's more of like a refreshing summer one for me. To give you an idea on the macros here, this coconut bar is 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, and four grams of sugar. So they're not loaded with sugar and they're high protein but low calorie, which allows me to have two a day. I can have one in the morning as a snack or if I'm on the go, just throw it in your bag, but then I can also heat one up at night. If you heat these up and put like whipped cream or ice cream on them, or even put them in between a graham cracker, it's literally so delicious. So if you're on a weight loss journey or you have a huge sweet tooth like I do, you're on the go, you wanna get your protein in, but you don't want a ton of sugar and you wanna keep it low calorie, I highly recommend Built Bars. I will link them down below as well as a code I have for 10% off. Check out their flavors and follow me for more because they do drop limited flavors and those are so good, so, so good. I'm always on it, especially on Instagram. So thank you again to Built Bar for sponsoring this video. I will leave all the information down below and let's get into what else I've been loving. I'm actually gonna start out with a self tanner, what I've been using lately and why I love it. I've actually gotten quite a few DMs recently asking me what I use, so I thought I would just touch on it because I just did repurchase. So I've been using the Bondi Sands Arrow Ultra Dark Coconut Scent. So they have quite a few here, but this is the one that I've been preferring. You can get it at Ulta, which is where I got it, or Walgreens sometimes in store, they now carry Bondi Sands. So the reason I love this is it says it's a quick dry formula and I agree with that. It's one of the more comfortable ones to sleep in so it's not intensely sticky. There's some that I really like but I just can't stand to sleep in them because they're so sticky that it's really uncomfortable. This is one of the more dry down ones. Of course sleeping in a self tan you're gonna have tackiness but this is more comfortable to sleep in so I like that. I like the color. It's not too orange. It's not too green olive. It's not too red. It's just a nice tan in between. I've also found that this one wears the best. It doesn't get as splotchy or dry as other formulas I've tried. I have a trouble area on the inside of my arm and I don't know if it's from rubbing against my body. Plus I should probably use lotion more. I know this but for me I hate when it gets alligator skin like and really scaly and I know you know what I'm talking about if you do self tanner. So non sticky formula which makes it more comfortable to sleep in. Good even color and it lasts the best and it's quite affordable. So again you can get it at Ulta or Walgreens. I I will link it down below. I picked mine up at Ulta because my local Walgreens didn't have it in stock. Next up is a random favorite that I purchased on a whim because I was trying to switch up my hairstyles and just kind of sleeking my hair back more. Even today's style, just kind of sleeking my hair down to put it behind my ears. This is one thing I'm noticing though. I have such small ears, like tiny, tiny little ears that my little ear is like 
hanging on <laughs> by a thread, like trying to hold my hair behind it. I feel like bad, especially this ear. I'm like, girl, are you okay? I just have really small ears and my hair is not slicked down to my head. I don't have the type of hair that like lays flat. I have very fine hair, frizzy hair, I guess. So I purchased this to sort of pull my hair back for tutorials, get it out of my face, but not have flyaways all over. This is from insert name here, and this is called their Quick Slick Hair Essence. Essentially, this is a hair gel with a mascara wand to tame your flyaways. I have used a lot of this. I'm probably gonna need to repurchase. Like, I can see clear through the tube, and I like it because it's not super thick or sticky. I can brush through it. So I kind of use it in this capacity because otherwise my hair just will not lay flat. And even using it, I still, like, my hair, like, doesn't wanna cooperate. But I use it just like this, or I go over these flyaways up here, or I use it when I pull my hair back into a bun and I have breakage right here. I'll just use it to push the breakage back. I think it's such a genius idea and I'm sure this is nothing new. This is the first I've heard of it, but I actually just saw that Elf and Jen Atkins are coming out with a collaboration and she has a brow gel slash flyaway gel. And I was like, that's literally what this is. So I've been loving it. I love the formula on this. I just find it easier to work with. I have gels like the got to be gel and that is intense and if I put that through my hair, I won't be able to brush through it and I have to wash it. So I like to use this just to kind of tame my flyaways. It's so strange how different we all are because I see girls like Allie Glines, for instance, her hair is like perfectly swooped and I'm like, does she use gel? Because for me, like it would take loads of gel to get my hair like that. So this has been a lifesaver, something I really like. I've seen um, some other people mention some on Amazon, so I might check it out, see if there's like a better price, but I actually really like this formula. So when this runs out, I will be repurchasing it. Next, I want to talk about a concealer that I just can't stop using and I mix it with other concealers. It's just really, really brightened my under eye and I feel like just changed my makeup game. And that is the Kimchi Chic The Most Concealer. So I started off and I purchased medium beige, which is way lighter than it sounds. So I'll swatch them for you just so you can get an idea. But medium beige is a light, light yellow tinted concealer. So I like to mix this. I'll mix it with my Armani Power Fabric or Armani Luminous Silk, really any hydrating like the Kosas concealer. If I want a little bit more hydration but I want the coverage and brightness of this, this is a matte concealer. And there's also corrector colors. So I bought a different shade because I first bought medium beige and I really liked it but it's really, really light. So I went in and got light amber. And I like this because it has a peachy tone to it and it's a little bit deeper. So here's light amber. So I noticed that this does really well with my blueness under my eyes. Because it has that peachy tone, it sort of cancels it out. It is matte. It can be a little bit drying in my experience. So make sure that you hydrate under your eye or again, just mix it with a dewy concealer that you want more coverage from. But this does a beautiful job cleaning up my wing or really just enhancing and brightening right in here. So I've really been loving it. I love the powder from them too. I purchased these myself, but if this runs out, I will be rebuying it. Next Next up, I have a primer that I have fallen in love with and I've only recently been using it for the past few weeks. I did a sponsorship with Giorgio Armani on stories for their Luminous Silk collection. I have to say, reusing that foundation, I haven't used it in quite a while, but the foundation and concealer and this primer are made for each other. They look so good. I'll even insert a clip here of my skin. I sent it to my friend Cheryl and she was like, your skin's never looked better. Just gorgeous together, all three of these products. But this stood out to me specifically and this I've been using with any other foundation. I've really been liking it. This is the Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer. I'd never really heard anybody talk about these, but when you do a sponsorship, they send you out the product and you get to try it, and then you can say like, yes, I like the product, I wanna do the sponsorship, or no, I don't like that, I don't wanna feature that product, whatever it may be. This has become like a top drawer product for me, and like I said, the combination of the three just looks so beautiful on the skin. So this has a gel-like texture, and it's like a clear kind of pinky tone, but it's really just clear. 
This is so nice on the skin and it really does give you that nice hydrated look. You can see it's just like a nice hydrating gel primer. So what I've been doing is taking a brush and really putting it on my forehead and on the tops of my cheekbones, really giving me that glow and even just under my eye. And I've been really enjoying it. It really is hydrating, but it's still lightweight. It's not thick or adding texture. I've seen SMLXO, Stephanie also rave about it too, and she's right, I love it. I've just been reaching for it a lot ever since I've had it. This is really the product that stands out to me because I can use it with any foundation, and I just like the hydration that it gives, and it just looks really pretty under makeup. So I have two highlighters that I want to feature. I just think they're so beautiful, and they're really blinding, but I can melt them into the skin or buff them into the skin, and they do look like one with the skin. The first one, I have to give it to Ofra and Steph Toms for their Milk and Cookies highlight. Lighter. When I demoed this, you guys, I actually had like a <gasps> reaction, which I don't have. I know a lot of beauty gurus go like really crazy. Like on TikTok, they're like, oh, the, the KVD is so high coverage. Like they're shocked. To me, I don't really get shocked from high coverage or blinding highlights, but I have to say these two are on a whole nother level. So you have a gold on this side, which is what I put on first, and it's the typical Ofra formula, which is already blinding, but something special about the lighter shade, and it doesn't even show up in swatches until you put it on the skin, you're like, whoa. Like this is for the glowiest of the glowy lovers. If you want to beam, but you also want it to look natural, I highly recommend this, and it is available at Ulta now, or you can get it on their website. So pretty, I really have kept this top drawer and I love how I can buff this in and it does look like one with the skin. So that's what I'm wearing right now. It's just gorgeous. If you really want that intense highlight, you can just apply it as is, but you can also really like kind of circular motions into the skin and it does just look almost wet. It's so beautiful, so I had to give this a shout out. Another highlighter that I've been enjoying and I have to give it to her, this is one of the most intense highlighters I've ever tried. And this is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Highlighter in Iced. So I purchased this with her blush duos. This was the only highlighter I picked up and the shade is perfect for me, but this is blinding. So I would say the Ofra, you can buff in a little bit more and make a little bit more natural, I guess, or lit from within. This one is intense. So let me just top off my highlight here. I mean, it's blinding and I just used the smallest amount. So if you like the most intense glowy highlight, I think either of these, to be honest, you'll really like. The Ofra, you have more of a buildable option where you can start with the kind of darker gold and then add the topper. The Jaclyn is off the bat, like bam in your face. But I have to give it to her. The formula is nice, smooth, pigmented, and just really, really intense. It has that really high shine metallic. And I really do like the formula. I like the color I got as well. So I'm really happy with it. And it's been standing out as a favorite for me. Next up, I have to give credit where credit is due. And I have to say that Melt Cosmetics, this may be the best product they've ever released. This is their cream blush lights. I have three shades. I have a couple more in my Sephora cart. By the time this video goes live, I probably have already purchased them. I have Polished, Sandy Cheeks, and Honey Thief. Here are the swatches, and I can put some close-ups. Polished has a sort of glow to it, so it kind of has shimmer in it. It's kind of like NARS Orgasm, but in cream blush form. Sandy Cheeks is a really pretty terracotta peach, and then Honey Thief is more of like a pinky creamsicle peach. These blend just effortlessly over a full set face or not. They are just so easy to work with. No patching, no lifting. They're just gorgeous. I don't know what else to say other than beautiful formula. They knocked it out of the park with this. I hope these don't sell out because I know the sale is starting and I know a lot of people want to get their hands on these, but this is one of the standout products that I've tried recently. I really want every single shade. Again, if you set your face and you're like, oh, I can't use a cream, you can with this. I just use my sponge and just really lightly tap over. I tap them over powder and bronzer and everything else and they just work beautifully. Have to give credit where it's due. This is such a beautiful formula. I really hope that they expand on this. Maybe they could make bronzers or highlighters in the same formula because it's just really that good. Next, I wanna talk about my lip combo. I have been loving these products, so I'm gonna go one by one. Starting off with the lip liner. This is the Nabla Close Up Lip Shaper. I have the shade Nude Number no. 5. Something about the tone on this and the depth of it, it's so perfect for me to kind of outline and then fill in the corners and give me that contoured look. It lasts all day. It's creamy, but it's not sliding everywhere. I really, really, really love this, and I feel like it pairs 
so beautifully with those really light lipsticks. So I've been loving this lip liner, but I love to pair it with the Vive lipstick in the shade Treasure. So this is one of the newer ones that I've been using recently. And something about these two shades together is just perfect. It's just like a peachy nude, but it's quite light. So they really blend into each other and look really nice, again, for that kind of nude center lip with the darker lip liner. It just works perfectly. And then I have been loving, I still love these. This is the Tower 28, the Milky Jelly Glosses. So I have here almond and oat. I used oat today, it's probably my most used, just because it's a light pink. And I love the fact that they don't have any shimmer in them. They really are just that milky, light kind of wash of color. So that's oat. And then I also really love Almond. Almond is darker, but it's a really unique shade for my collection. And they definitely have pigment to them, so you can also just line your lips and then use this alone. But today I have the Nobble Lip Liner with the Treasure Lipstick, and then I just topped it with Oat. But these are all products I like to mix, match, use alone. They're just standout formulas for me, so I wanted to mention them all. Speaking of lips, I really have to mention this again because I'm so in love with these colors, and I've been wearing them recently, and they're just perfect for spring and summer. So these are the YSL Lipstick Bomb. And I featured one in a sponsored video with them, which is so beautiful. This is the shade 122. It's one of their newer shades because they came out with a like Burning Chilies collection. Look how gorgeous this color is. I literally can't get over it. It's so beautiful. I just like to line my lips and then pop these on the center of my lips. But I've also been loving number 86. I purchased this after I fell in love with 122. This one's like mauve something. So beautiful. I wore it in an Instagram photo recently and I have just fallen in love with this formula again. I used it a long time ago but I think I got away from it because we sort of went into the really matte liquid lipstick phase where it was like the drier the better like everybody just wanted like the full matte and now I'm like maybe not like I'm more into something that's a little bit more comfortable and this is so perfect for spring and summer and what I like is that they don't migrate so I can use a lip liner and they don't like smear outside of my lip line so I really enjoy these I already have a couple more in my basket for the Sephora sale because I'm just like, oh my gosh, I fell back in love with this formula. I haven't had one for a while, but this color really sparked my interest. So I have two complexion products before we get to the fails, and this one I just can't stop using, and it's a drugstore product that I've fallen in love with. This is the Physician's Formula Matte Sunkissed Bronzer. So they have their butter bronzers, but they came out with this matte formula, and I have to say I like this even more. This is a really warm toned bronzer, but something about this, you can't mess it up. Like it's so buildable and I don't know if it's just the color or the formula. It doesn't have that creamy feel like the butter bronzers. This is much more dry, but it just blends beautifully. And this tone, while it looks orange, it really is like a suntan in a compact. Somebody commented that when I tried this on camera and I think you're so right. Literally every time I put this on, I'm like, wow, I look like I've been in the sun and I haven't because Listen, I'm not trying to age my skin, so I'm all about like the self-tanner, but I just can't stop using this every single day. It's just so easy. It blends perfectly. It never gets muddy. I never overdo it. It's just one of those that has stood out to me ever since I tried it in my video a couple months ago. It's been right next to me, top drawer, and I use it a lot, especially just every day. I do wish that they would come out with more shades. I know they have another shade, and I don't know how it compares to this just because I ordered this online from Walmart, but I'll have to see them in store and see if maybe I can pick up the other shade and give me a different tone, but the formula on this is beautiful. So I have to give another shout out to this product because I just love it so much. It's so smoothing and I feel like my skin just looks flawless when I use this. Haley's Beauty, you guys know I love their foundation, I love their pore primer, and I love their powder. This is the Retouch Soft Focus Setting Powder. This, you guys, my skin looks porcelain when I use this. They recently did a repackage, but it's the same formula. I thought I could touch up with it just because I'm under these hot lights and I've been wearing this makeup for, you know, an hour and a half, two hours now. Something about this powder is so smoothing and so flattering. It's just so nice on the skin. I notice, especially when I'm taking photos or if I'm doing like Instagram stories, I recently did one for them for their April Fool sale. My skin just looked 
poreless. And that really doesn't happen, especially on the iPhone. Those iPhones can do you dirty, like dirty. That's why a lot of people use filters. But this really just smoothed my skin out and I just can't get over it. It's just one of my favorite setting powders. I have a few that I love, but this again, never leaves my top drawer. But really the formula just gives me that smooth airbrushed look. And you guys know that's what I look for, especially in a powder. I want it to set my makeup down, but not make me look dry, but also smooth my texture. So now that we've gone over my favorites, let's talk about a couple fails. And I'm really sad about this one, but speaking of texture enhancing dry powders, I just cannot recommend the new Tatcha powder. This is the silk powder. I have to say the packaging is super beautiful. And I love Tatcha, like the dewy serum, and I love the dewy skin cream. I really have enjoyed some of their products. This just did not look good on my skin. I did a demo of this and a lot of you agreed. It clung and did some funky thing on the side of my nose and I've tried it multiple times since then. It has a radiance to it and I think the whole goal is like if you have dry skin, you want a radiance. But for me, a powder is a powder and I don't want a radiance in my powders, specifically loose powders that are going to go on the center of my face. It just never works out for me. So it has a yellow tint and it has this kind of interesting packaging. It just has a dry feel. Like even when I put it on my hand, it has a really thin texture, meaning that it's finely milled, but it just has some sort of like dryness to it. It just makes me look dry. And I usually don't have that problem. I wear matte foundations and I don't really look dry. I don't think that I have an issue with like clinging, but something about it just looked so dry and textured under my eyes and on the sides of my nose just wasn't flattering and for me especially with the hefty price tag so for me it just didn't work out it may work out for you if you have a different skin type but i just really prefer a loose powder that doesn't have any kind of radiance in it i want something that's just really going to smooth me out and unfortunately this just did not work for me my next fail is something that i heard great things about but then i haven't really heard anybody talking about since and it could be the color that i got but i just don't like it enough to go out and buy another shade to try. This is the Wet n Wild Incognito. I struggle to say that. The all day full coverage concealer. I have the shade light medium. This oxidized so horribly and it's just too dark for me. So let me show you what it looks like. Just swatching it, I felt like, yeah, that'll work. It's a little bit dark, but that's fine. But it dries down and it's so dark. It just made me look really not great under my eyes, like ill, almost like a green yellow, too dark. And on top of that, I didn't like the texture of it. I didn't feel that the coverage was really crazy wow full coverage. So I've let this swatch dry down, but I wanna swatch it fresh next to it just so you can see how it oxidizes. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like a yellow tone beige here and then it goes to like a deeper peach. For me, I can totally see the difference in color and it just was too deep under my eyes. But on top of that, it just wasn't the most smoothing and I don't think the coverage was anything crazy to write home about. I have so many concealers that I love already, so I tried it, but I think the shade ultimately and just the texture of it wasn't for me. And then lastly, I have to say that I am a little nervous to put this in a fail, but for me, it truly is a fail, especially for the price. I personally did not love these products and I just wanna keep it real with you guys. So while I loved her highlighter, I have to say that I do not love the Jaclyn Cosmetics Blush and Bronzer Duos. I bought these from her website when I bought the highlighter and then I did go on to buy a couple of her liquid lipsticks. I have nothing against Jaclyn, I've supported her. I pretty much have bought, I think, everything that she's released. So I am rooting for her, I'm not rooting for anybody to fail. And I truly love makeup, so for me, I just like to try new stuff. Something about these just did not wow me. And beyond that, I just don't feel pretty when I put them on. So let me tell you why. So here's the packaging. I think it's pretty. It's pretty bulky, but it doesn't really bother me. Inside you get a mirror and it says Jaclyn Cosmetics. Now this duo is Pink Me Up and Oh Honey. So my first thought was that a lot of them looked similar. I wish there was more color variation like in depth of the bronzers and even the blushes. Now I love a pink blush and I even love a baked blush. M Cosmetics has one of my favorite formulas ever of a baked blush, but something about these blushes is just, it's almost like it's too light and the shimmer or the radiance in it is not flattering on my skin. So I have here Sunkissed and Bronze Moment, which is the deeper one. And then the second one I have is Pink Me Up and Oh Honey. 
the blush basically doesn't show up and I have to build the bronzer like five different times. So it's something about the formula. I don't like how buildable it is. It's too buildable in my opinion. I like something that I can put on, you know, one or two layers and be good to go. These, I feel like I really seriously have to build up like four to five layers. And for me, it's just really time consuming. And then on top of it, the tones just don't work for me. And I don't know why. The top one just looks a little bit muddy on me. I don't know what it is. And the bottom one, it just takes so much building that I'm just like, I don't have the patience for that. Just to compare, I grabbed one of my M Cosmetics blushes. This is the newest shade in Venetian Rose. And it definitely is that baked formula. It has the kind of shimmer radiance in it, but I think it just overall has more pigment. I don't know really what the difference is, but you can see here the M Cosmetics. It just has more pigment. It still have, has a nice glow to it, but it's just, these are so light. I just, I don't know. For me, they just don't show up. Too much building, and I just don't really love the tones on me. They look so similar anyways, so I tried to make it work, but I'm just not a fan of them. I wouldn't say run out and buy them. Now, I've seen mixed reviews. Some people seem to love them, and some people seem to feel like I do, and I just wouldn't recommend them. For me, I'm just going to declutter them from my collection because every time I use them, I just don't love the way my makeup turns out, unfortunately. So that is everything for my current favorites and fails. Lots of favorites, products that I'm loving right now and unfortunately a couple things that didn't work for me but if they work for you that's amazing. I just wanted to share my review in case you were wondering. I will link everything down below. Don't forget to check out Built Bar. I highly highly recommend. I will leave my discount code in my links down below. I hope you'll consider subscribing if you're new. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.